We're just a positive football team, you know, but uh, that's why I have so much support. Well, the one thing with Manchester United, it, it unites people, full stop. Any girl in Cork, if she knows what she's doing, she'll support Man United. When they won the FA Cup, or when they won the league, or when they won the European Cup, there's always been Irishmen in the team. It was just a passion that's there and always has been there, probably always will be there. Darren, Collins is handled that was. comes the best, and it's there! Beautiful, absolutely beautiful! 58 stars, including six captains, from Carey to Keane, Manchester United and the Emerald Isle has always been inextricably linked. The greats, and we're talking greats, the brave, the brash, the brilliant, the devilish reds. There's always been an Irishman at the heart of Manchester United, and Manchester United in the hearts of the Irish. It's hard to say what the bondage is, you know, you could go into historical and you could say, does it go back to 1948 and Johnny Curry, the FA Cup winning captain? Does it go into the 60s, you know, when, when Georgie came there and was a Beatle mania and if maybe it was, he was the first pop star footballer? Or do you go into the 70s and look at Sammy McElroy right up until the 80s and we, and we have uh, Norman Whiteside and then into the 90s there's Keno and, and Dennis. So I think there's always been Irish players at United, probably from the fact that when they started off there were uh, Yankish, Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway team and probably a lot of Irish immigrants in Manchester supported the team and ended up playing for the team. So it's quite historical to go back into two centuries ago where obviously this is a new millennium. The Irish connection with Manchester itself begins largely with the immigration of Irish people in the early 19th century during the Industrial Revolution. If we look at the 1841 population census, something like 12% of the population of Manchester was Irish born. That's before the Great Famine. 1851, after the Great Famine, it rises to about 15%. There's a lot of job opportunities for Irish people in construction work, canal building, later railway building. They have to live near to their work. They've got to live near to where the building sites are, to where the railways are being constructed. You, you would get people, Irish people living around that Newton Heath area who might go and follow their, watch their local club. The connection with United and Ireland is, actually goes back as far as Newton Heath. Before Manchester United was formed, they had an Irish player by the name of John Payden, who was a forward. The next notable Irish man would have been a player by the name of Mickey Hamill, who actually signed for United for what was then a record fee of £175. In the um, promotion year of 1938, um, there were three Irish men who actually played in the team. Uh, Harry Bird, who was a top goal scorer. There was a goalkeeper by the name of Tommy Breen, who actually represented both Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. And that was the start of the career of the great Johnny Carey. Kerry was the first great post-war Dubliner who started the trail from Dunleary across the sea to stardom. The first discovery of Billy Bean, Matt Busby's South of Ireland talent spotter. Kerry was a natural leader of men, Matt Busby's first captain. Everybody in Ireland knew how good a player Johnny Carey was. So um, I remember thinking when I was at home in Cork as a little boy of maybe 12 or 13, it'd be lovely one day to play for Man United and to be something like Johnny Carey. So he was my idol. The thing about Johnny Carey was he was such a gentleman. That's what seems to come over. Uh, captain of the team, not only captain of United, captain of Ireland, captain of Great Britain. Uh, very, very respected throughout the whole game. And what does it feel like to be captain of a cup winning side? Well, I can't think of a better way to finish than by asking Johnny Carey to tell you himself. I'm very pleased to have been taking this cup back to Manchester again after a period of 40 years. Fine. Right. Right. Johnny Carey, who was the Republic of Ireland player and, and at that time was an immense player. Actually, he played in every position in the club. But he was an inside forward and I converted him to a full back. And, of course, from there, he was immense, and uh, not only that, he was a great help to me and a great, a great captain. 
We were all proud of him. He was a Dublin lad, Irish to boot, and he done us proud. And, you know, home firm football club was very proud of him. Liam Whelan's first game in a Manchester United shirt came in the 1953 FA Youth Cup final. He was a teenager flown in especially. It was also the big attraction when United played their first ever competitive game in Ireland against Shamrock Rovers, scoring twice in the European Cup. I thought he was a very uh, great header of the ball for his day, you know, which was, um, as a kid, you didn't realise how intelligent of a player he was and how fast he was with the head and the ball and his passing. So it out to Whelan, Whelan dropping deep to get the ball. Now, no-one's moving for him, he's just holding it, just holding it. And a very good pass indeed, right to the outside right position. It's very, very bringing it in quickly to Evans, the Arsenal fullback and left fullback. He's pulled it back. Oh, and this is too late. And it's there. After the interval, Manchester really start getting down to work. Left winger Peg has the ball. He centres, it bounces off Taylor, and Whelan makes sure of it. Sadly, as Liam Whelan was on the verge of greatness, he was aboard the plane from Belgrade, and his was one of the 21 lives tragically lost. On the fringe of a Munich airport lies the wreckage of an airliner, still smouldering from a crash in which 21 people were killed. Tragedy enough at any time, but in that plane were a group of young men who were almost the personal friends of millions. Manchester United the finest soccer team Britain has produced since the war. Well, the whole of Ireland, I think the, all the world was shocked. Um, I remember standing just across the road there when this cortege come down from Dublin Airport and it all lit up. First time I seen a hearse with a coffin lit up in a cold, wintry day as a child. And uh, yes, the whole country was shocked for the whole Manchester United team. For the first game after the disaster, another young Irishman was introduced. Billy Fuchs wins the toss for Manchester United against Sheffield Wednesday. And it's the most dramatic game Busby's Babes have ever played. Wednesday and the striped shirts kick off. Less than a fortnight after the Munich air crash, the Babes are fielding a scratch side for a fifth round FA Cup tie. And apart from Fuchs himself, the only member of the original team is goalie Harry Gregg. Brennan takes a corner and it's in. shot rebounds but Seamus Brennan's there to land a beauty 20 year old Brennan was only included a few hours before the match his first big game ever and he scored two goals a goal scoring start for a player who is to become a model of consistency Brennan's love of playing for the club spanned three decades of all the people at Old Trafford in my time and old, old time I think Shea was probably the most popular person in the, in the dressing room Every, nobody could ever say anything. He was such a modest, lovely guy and treated life as a, you know, a bit of fun. And uh, he, he lived his life like that and he, exceptional person. Brennan's partner at fullback was Tony Dunn. No Irishman's played more games for United. Tony was a smashing guy, possibly the best left back that ever left Ireland. Definitely the fastest. Well, it was a great sense of pride and honour that he came from our club to United. And as far as I can remember, he, he practically walked straight into the first side. Tony Dunn is a very fast defender. That is Tony Dunn. Sattler, David Sattler, Shea Brennan. Born in Manchester, but plays for Ireland. And you say beyond his right, number 10. Busby's legendary European Cup winning team will be remembered for Charlton and Best. But success was built on defence. Brennan on the right, Dunn a star on the left. Ask Eusebio. Now, just five minutes then as Eusebio is... Beaten by Dunn. Best Charlton in the middle, so too is Aston. Charlton! And over! He's got another! Nine minutes gone! And this must be it now! Leading the legendary lap of honour, Shea Brennan. And keeping a grip of the trophy, as he did the Benfica stars, Tony Dunn. Paddy Roach, he was the centre-forward uh, when he was a schoolboy. 
and one day the team had no goalkeeper or got injured and he had to go in and he ended up being a goalkeeper and then the ironic part of it was he was transferred to Manchester United when Tommy Doherty was the manager. It was funny really because I was working as a driver then in my brother's motor factories in Dublin and uh, the base was in Bray, County Wicklow and I got out to Bray in County Wicklow and uh, I walked in the door and one of the lads shouted to me, he says you better get into the Gresham Hotel in Dublin, he says you're signing for Manchester United. I said, <coughs> I don't think so. And I said, yeah, yeah, it's true. So that, that was it. Two clean sheets in these first two games at Old Trafford, Paddy was off to a flyer. But errors in televised high-profile matches shattered his confidence. And Paddy Roach is finding life at the top pretty hard. I got off to a bad start and uh, it's very difficult as the goalkeepers are finding it now. If you make one mistake early on in your games, it's very, very hard. You've got to be a really special type of person to put it out of your mind with the amount of pressure that's on you. I obviously would have liked my career to have gone a bit better, but I played professionally for 18 years, so it can't be that bad. But um, I would have loved to have really made it to the top of United, but it wasn't to be. Pat Rice. Here's Ricks on the far side. Getting beyond to Sunderland. Oh, kicked away by Roach. Again, the making of Graham Ricks. Shannon quickly for Keegan. Oh, a word. And a good save again by Roach. The best memory I have is after we beat Liverpool and I didn't play, unfortunately. We played six times at Wembley when I was there and I never I was on the bench each time. But my outstanding memory is a young Steve couple, one o'clock in the morning with the cup, embracing the cup, falling asleep, slightly inebriated after we beat Liverpool in the cup final. And it's a lovely memory. In the 70s, United went all bohemian. Three players signed from the same Cabra club, Mick Martin set in the trend. Jerry Daly scuttled his way to stardom. And following him, Ashley Grimes winged in. They were loved players here. They were loved and everybody was delighted for them. Go to Manchester United, every boy's dream. Every boy's dream. Like Roy the Rover stuff. Ah, oh, he was a fabulous little player. He skilled with the ball. Was, he was an exceptional player. Houston. The overhead by Makari, and a great goal by Daly! What a brilliant goal! A lovely ball from Will Makari to Hill. Daly! Beautifully built goal! And it'll be Jerry Daly to take the penalty for Manchester United. He's already put two home this season, two penalties. And it's a perfect penalty, 1-0 to United, and their supporters really enjoying the long journey down now. Jerry, the way you've been taking penalties this season, it doesn't look as though it's possible to miss them. So what I want you to do is we'll set three up here, and we'd like to just have a look at the daily technique. Three out of three. I'll applaud you for that. I see no reason why it should hit the bar hard. I think you should just place it, you know. Here goes Daly. Just, only just. But it's good enough, it's 1-1. Daly to try again. Nice little flick from Pearson, he's trying again. And Pearson, and now Daly! 2-0! They couldn't keep him out forever. Koppel to take on Frank Gray. And Eddie Gray. And Nichols cross headed away by McQueen. Back in brilliantly by Daly. Ashley was a gifted player. He had a marvellous left foot, marvellous right foot as well. I'd been thrown down as a lad when I was at United. And uh, over those years, before I joined Bohemians, I think Billy had, Billy had kept on top and he he'd kept interested in, in how I was doing. And eventually when I went to Bohemians and, and, and got into the first team, it was the opportunity to come to Manchester United and I never... Uh, there was no turning back. I didn't think twice about it. Mark Roy was reading the move. Chris Grimes. Three players left.